what is going on guys it is a fine fine super fine day here in southwest pa and in today's episode we are going to be talking about when to consider yourself a uh, beginner rider level two or an intermediate rider and i kind of want to talk about this because i had a couple people in my comments say why do you still consider yourself a beginner rider you have uh, almost 20,000 miles on your bike in two years why do you still consider yourself a beginner rider and the the answer to that is because I still consider myself a beginner rider you know I think uh, uh, that that's just kind of how I think of myself and it, it made me think about when when would somebody consider themselves a level two or an intermediate rider and I kind of thought about it before, but I, I really put it to paper and I kind of wanted to share those with you. So, and, and let me start off by saying this is my opinion for me. This is not what I'm telling you, how you should follow or judge you or whatever. I always say you are the only person who's going to pay for your actions. So that is what I, what I personally believe. So however you want to think is totally fine it doesn't affect me it only affects you so for me i have three criteria and that is education seat time and miles um seat time and miles are very important as well as education which might be one of the more important ones but for me as far as education goes for me to start to consider myself an intermediate or a level two or whatever I want to call it, I need to complete two things in the education department. The first one is the advanced rider course. I need to do it and complete it and pass it as well as I need to do complete and pass the teaching aspect of it. You guys know I like the education part of this and the YouTube channel and all that stuff. And that is what I really want to do. And I, I think being able to teach something means you really understand it and you really know it. So for me, the education part, th those are the two things that I need to complete. I need to complete the advanced rider course and I need to complete the teaching aspect of it. And I would also like to be able to have a couple classes under my belt. Just... Um, just to really solidify it again you know i'm a firm believer that if you can teach something you truly understand it and that's what i want to do i really want to understand this to explicit detail that's just how i operate i really like really understanding something and kind of getting borderline obsessed with it but you know whether that is good or bad that's just kind of what i do the next thing as far as criteria goes is um, miles and uh, y you know I, I don't like to go by years uh, a, a lot of people kind of do like oh well you know I have um, I have three years four years five years of um, riding experience which way I want to go uh, hold on I'll be right back okay that's better uh you know a lot of people say well you know i got three years four years five years of riding experience but they only have like four thousand five thousand eight thousand miles under their belt and in reality that's not a lot of time uh motorcycling is interesting because th this take it a step back you always heard the phrase you never forget how to ride a bike once you learn to ride a bike you never forget and that is kind of true with motorcycling because the hard part of riding a motorcycle is just riding the bike itself and then it's really easy to forget that you know this is a, a something that can kill you right and and you kind of downplay it's like oh i'm just riding a bike i know how to turn i know how to brake i know how to do this but without that miles and seat time you really don't understand in my personal opinion until you really get down those emergency brakes and emergency maneuvers and everything like that i think it's really really freaking important so that's why i like to go by seat time and miles 
rather than just years because I mean again somebody can ride for seven years and only have 5,000 miles under the belt I understand I ride a lot that's just something that I do I don't know what's wrong with me but I, I, I put a lot of miles on my bike so as far as miles go I think the number that I have in my head is 40,000 miles maybe 50,000 miles um, I think four years is the the goal for me I, I kind of like to think of this as uh, college just because college is like so engraved in my head because I did like two STEM degrees or whatever it's like it's like forever cemented in my brain and watch out for these leaves but man this looks pretty um, but so so I think you know I did 2,000 20,000 miles in two years four years I should have 40,000 miles so the next one for me as far as miles go is I want to have 40,000 miles under my belt now I understand Moto Jiu Jitsu he has a very high number with his I mean I think he, his was like a uh, hundred thousand miles before you even get out of the um, the beginner phase which you know hey whatever I think everybody kind of does whatever they want to do for me this is kind of what I'm going with and with the the 40,000 miles you also have to hit the hours too and the hours is what's really important too because miles is just like a linear thing that you can measure but time also linear arguably but time is interesting because that's whenever you or exercising your brain that's the hours and hours of sitting in traffic of watching people uh, their, their patterns picking up patterns uh, just figuring out how to um, get around things and, and stuff like that and that seat time is really really important and I you know definitely should not ignore it I cannot see over that hill and this is super steep we are we are just going straight because i am not dropping this bike at all nope nope absolutely not and uh so so i think i don't know i think right now i'm at about i think it's 12 1200 hours um i think back back up back that ass up i think i'm about yeah i think i'm about 1200 hours at just under 20,000 miles so I think by 40,000 miles I should have like I don't know 2,500 hours that's a nice even number so I think by 2,500 hours and 40,000 miles I would start to kind of consider myself a, um, a, a level 2 or maybe an intermediate rider um and you know hey after college there's grad school so after the four years man we got to go back to school we got to go back to grad school and what the those details would be i don't know um usually in college you got to do a dissertation if you're doing stem so maybe my uh dissertation or my big project will be a cross-country coast-to-coast trip I think that would be a uh, nice field trip to do so maybe that will um, we will incorporate that whenever I go for my masters or whatever so I don't know just kind of just kind of see what happens but yeah I mean that that's just my opinion you know this is kind of my own personal opinion what I think about myself um, again education advanced rider course and the teaching course and I have a couple classes taught under my belt hours I think 2,500 hours will put me at about 40,000 miles and you know in those 40,000 miles and 2,500 hours you know we're riding in the rain we're riding in the wind we're riding in the snow not that you have to do that um, rain yes yeah I, I would argue 100% rain because rain is one of those things where you know you will get you will get caught in uh, especially if you live in um in florida or or, or any kind of state like that so um I, I i would argue that you definitely have to have some seat time in the rain or whatever but you know uh, riding in the snow 
I do that, but I'm also kind of an idiot, so don't, you know, follow, ugh, excuse me, follow up with that, but I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I'd really want to hear what your guys' opinion on this, uh, on the subject is. Like, what do you think, or what standards are you holding on to yourself to consider yourself a non-beginner rider, level two, or intermediate, whatever you want to call it? I'm, I'd be interested in, uh, uh, yes, and hearing what you have to say. Ugh. I'm glad I made this video, man. I was, um, I was uh, kind of burnt out. I'm, I'm working with Mosides and I'm putting together a very, very in-depth video of a brand new 2025 ZX10 RR. Hopefully that video will be out the first week of December. So this video is completely random. I just kind of got inspired. So if you got inspired or you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for everything. And of course, I will see you in the next one.